Assalamu alaikum everyone, I'm Ali. And I'm Reem, and you're watching CAB TV Ramadan Special. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you've been enjoying our episodes because we have lots more ahead. Tonight it's the night of Laylatul Qadr. Lay means night. Qadr means dignity, grandeur, honor, and destiny. Laylatul Qadr means the night of grandeur and the night of destiny. The month of Ramadan contains the night of Qadr, which is so holy that it is better than a thousand months. It is a night full of blessings. Only Allah knows the value of this night. This is the night where the Holy Quran was revealed through the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for his followers. Knowing the importance of the Holy Quran during this month and every month makes it easy to introduce our first show, his Quran recitation. <laughs> Rahman Rahim Wail Lil Mutafifin El Dina Idak Talu Alan Nasias Tofun Wa Ala yazunu ulaika annahum mab'uthun liyawmin azim yawma yaqumun nasu liwabbil alameen kalla inna kitab al-fujjari lafi sijjin وَمَا أَدْوَاكَ مَا سِجِّينَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ الَّذِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ وَمَا يُكَذِّبُ بِهِ إِلَّا كُلُّ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ يُقَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْأَبْرَارِ لَفِي عِلِّينَ وَمَا أَدْوَاكَ مَا عِلِّيُّونَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ على الأرائك ينظرون تعرف في وجوههم نظرة النعيم يسقون من رحيق مختوم ختامه مسك وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون ومزاجه من تسنيم عين يشرب بها المقربون إن الذين أجرموا كانوا من الذين آمنوا يضحكون وَإِذَا مَرُوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَّزُونَ وَإِذَا قَلَبُوا إِلَى 
أهلهم قلبوا فكهين وإذا رأوهم قالوا إن هؤلاء لضالون وما أرسلوا عليهم حافظين فاليوم الذين آمنوا من الكفار يضحكون على الرائك ينظرون هل ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون صدق الله العلي العظيم رمضان يا خير الشهور فيك المحبة بلا شرور فيك السنة فيك الضياء رمضان يا خير الشهور The internet is a place we go to play games with our friends. We learn a lot of different things and keep up with the trends. We sign in two different places, we tap, we tap and click. But sometimes on the internet we forget to stop and think. The internet can be a dangerous place if we don't know all the rules. But watching CyberSafe can help me pick up all the tools. Salam alaikum and welcome to an episode of CyberSafe, the show that teaches you how to use the internet safely. In today's episode we will discuss social media safety. If you are approaching your teens, you may already be aware of a few social media platforms and some of your friends may already use them. You may probably also know that social media platforms do have an age restriction. So if you are below the age criteria, you could actually get in trouble. It's good to get an overall picture of social media and why it can be good and why it can be bad. The good thing about social media is that you can stay connected with friends and family. You can see a birthday cake your aunt put up or a day out your friend posted. There are also charity accounts which you can volunteer with and creative and artistic accounts which can give you lots of ideas and help you become more creative. Social media is a place where you can find people with similar interests to you and it's a way you can communicate with other students. That all sounds great so far. So you're probably wondering, now why is it so bad? One of the biggest reasons that social media can be bad is that it's usually a hub for cyberbullying. A lot of people share more information than they should on social media. How they feel, where they've been, who their family is, what their interests are. They may post images of their home and school and friends. And they might even reveal their real name on their profile. One of the most important rules we learn about internet safety is not giving out personal information. But when it comes to social media, I don't think that children realise how much personal information they are voluntarily giving out. Social media can be a scary and unsafe place for kids because you can get contacted by strangers very easily and you might keep getting advertisements that are not suitable for you. Another dangerous thing about social media is that people can be aware of your location because you can post an image which gets linked to where you took the image. When you post an image on social media, even though you think you might have deleted the image, it never really goes away. Spending too much time on social media can cause you to have a low mood when you look at how many friends others have and the pictures of them having fun it can make you feel bad about yourself because you start to think, why don't I have that many friends? Why don't I go to places like that? Why don't I have clothes like that? All of these things take you away from being thankful to God for what you do have. So now that you know everything about social media, if you do choose to use it in the future, you know the risks. If you do decide you want to use it, then at least follow these rules. Be nice. Mean behaviour is not okay. You should treat others with respect and never post anything that can hurt or embarrass another person. Think twice before hitting enter. Whatever you post can be used against you. So don't post things like your personal information or your location. Use privacy settings and make sure that your accounts are private and that you don't share your password with your friends because passwords are there to protect you. Finally, make sure you don't friend or follow strangers. If you don't know them, don't friend them. It's plain, simple and safe. We've nearly come to the end today, but not before we visit our internet safety rhyme. 
I keep my information safe, I don't let people know. My name, address, or number, or which call I go. I never talk to strangers if they're not a real life friend. No matter who they say they are, it could be just pretend. If I take a photo of a friend, I'm always well aware to what if it's okay with them before I click and share. I'm always kind to others in the playground and on screen. I never write or tell them things that are hurtful, bad, or mean. I always ask an adult before I go online. If we look at things together, I know I will be fine. If I ever see something, that makes me scared or sad I tell an adult I can trust and it won't be so bad By our beloved first Imam, Imam Ali, peace be upon him. He says, The most complete gift of God is a life based on knowledge. Here's our next show, Nehjah Balagha. My dearest child, have I ever told you about the time when there was a man who lived long before we did? The first man to accept the faith of the Prophet, Ali, son of Talib. He was a wise man who entrusted us with his words. We mustn't ever forget about these words. Now, my child, read this sermon out loud for me, will you, dear? Yes, Grandma. With insight. One who sees with his heart and acts with insight thinks before doing anything whether his action would be to his benefit or harm. If it is good for him, he performs it, but if it is harmful, he stops from doing it. Oh, that was lovely. That was lovely to hear, my little one. Now let's close this book and keep it in a safe place place before we go to sleep. Where shall I put it? Put it on that shelf, dear. The one over here? Yes, right over there, next to the red book. Here? Aha, that's the one. AD. This is when the Qibla changed from Bayatul Muqaddas, Jerusalem, to the Kaaba in Masjid al Haram, Mecca. Five times a day. It is the second pillar of Islam. We pray to thank God for all the things He's done and given us. Because we get closer to Allah, we get blessed by Him, and the prayer is the nur of our life. It keeps all the bad thoughts away. Praying is one way of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also a way of thanking Him. Prayers 
help us in all our emotions, whether we are happy or sad. We will always feel a sense of being looked after when we pray. Prayer helps us to gain closeness to Allah and get more so up. For me, it's a sense of peace when I'm talking to Allah. Because it gives you hasanat and it's like a ritual, so um, you get used to it. We often think that people from a thousand years ago were living in the dark ages. But in Muslim civilization from the 7th century onward, there were amazing advances and inventions that still influence our everyday lives. In 1145, the Muslim geographer Al Idrisi finished the first atlas, which showed most of North Africa, Asia, and Europe. This was about a hundred years before Marco Polo wrote about his travels to China and back. <laughs> When the advisor said to Bahlul, the Khalifa has made you Amir and commander of dogs, chickens and pigs. Bahlul replied, then from now on, don't disobey my order because you have become my subject. All the advisor's companions laughed. The advisor was very ashamed and embarrassed because of Bahlul's reply. <laughs> Assalamualaikum everyone and welcome back to the Rhyming Factory. Now, my mum always said that sharing is good, sharing is caring. So that's why I want to let you in on another poem that my good friend showed me. It goes a bit like this. Now, before I start, you need to know the rules. So I'm going to recite the poem and you need to guess what the poem is about. Does everyone understand? Perfect! When we're sad, or when we're mad, there is someone brightly clad who says, be glad. When we're happy, this is what we do. Our teeth, people see, they shine right through. The prophet did this, we never want to miss. This acts like a witness in a moment of happiness. Remember to do this all day, even when you talk and say, this is free, you don't have to pay. Everything is better this way. What am I? Have you guessed it? I'm a smile. Thank you so much for listening to this poem. I hope it made you smile like the poem was talking about. See you next time on The Rhyming Factory. Assalamu alaikum. I'm the hijab fairy and today I'm going to introduce another beautiful young girl and her experiences with hijab. Are you ready to watch with me? Let's go! My name is Aya and I'm 10 years old. I wore hijab when I was 9 and I wore it because Allah wanted me to. Hijab means that I'm a good mu'mina. When I wear hijab, I feel happy because I'm doing what Allah wants me to. It makes me feel safe. When I do what Allah wants me to do, He keeps me safe. Hijab represents me as a Muslim. I want to encourage people to wear hijab because I want to get thawab for 
for making them wear it and and I want them to get the world for wearing it. I hope you enjoyed watching her video. I'll see you again soon for another hijab story. Lots of love and du'as. to Allah, whose door is never closed. That's a line from Dua Al-Iftitah by the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi, peace be upon him. Don't go anywhere for our next show. Ah. Assalamu alaikum. How wonderful the world is. Mountains, rivers, forests, farmland, lakes and grassland, let all evidence Allah's bounty and grace. How blessed we are to be able to communicate with the magnificent Creator who brought everything into existence and has made it possible for us to survive and benefit from all of His bright and beautiful signs. He facilitated means whereby all of us may draw benefit from the light of guidance that he sent down with the Holy Messenger and his progeny, whom he appointed examplers and role models for humankind. May Allah Almighty enable us to be included under the supervision of the owner of the time, Imam Al-Mahdi, who is always with us, illuminating our way, even though we're not able to see him. Imam Ahmadi shares his words in the inspiring Dua al iftitah that all believers read during the holy month of Ramadan. Let us listen to a part of this Dua and find out what it means. <laughs> كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتي والقادة إلى سبيلي وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عربتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا in this part of the dua, the words we hear say, O oh Allah, we crave the good governance that respects Islam and its followers. So please remove hypocrisy and its followers. Grant us the opportunity, privilege, and help to lead others to obedience to you, by which we may achieve dignity in this life and the one to come. O Allah, grant us the strength to support truth and enable us to surmount our shortcomings. O Allah, by Mahdi, re-establish order in our affairs and unite us. These beautiful words move my heart as a humble servant of Allah and as an avid follower of Ahlbayt. Praise be to Allah, under whose protection we all are, today and every day of our lives. It's now time to recite our daily du'a. 
Here's up in the clouds. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma aftah li fihi abwaab fazliq wa anzil alayya fihi barakatika wa wafiqni fihi limujibati marzatika wa askini fihi bihubbuhati jannatika ya mujiba da'watil muftarin I'm sorry but that's all we've got time for today CAB TV is back tomorrow at the same time thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum. Ana habbik ya shar al khair li annak ahla ayami. Ahab azur ahbabi wa akhwali wa amami. Ana habbik ya shar al khair li annak ahla ayami. Ana habbik يا شهر الخير